Over the next three weeks, Austin voters will decide whether or not to restore the city's public camping ban. The Prop B campaign has been driven by big spending and primarily on one side of the issue. KXA investigator Kevin Clark explains who is trying to influence the vote. About the time I turned down to the Lady Bird Trail, I heard a woman scream. Videos like this one reflect time and money invested by the Save Austin Now Pack to get Prop B passed. The stakes in our city couldn't be higher. We went through hundreds of pages of campaign finance forms for the pack. Save Austin Now raised around $437,000. By far the largest donation, $100,000, came from an investment firm owned by businessman Phil Canfield. I called him but had to leave a voicemail. It is true the business community has stepped in in a number of industries. It is true that average Austinites who live in different neighborhoods across the city have stepped in. Records also show the PAC has spent around $319,000. We found that more than half the money the PAC spent was on consulting fees, but also fundraising software, social media ads, and mass text messages to possible voters, like I got one back in December. By comparison, there's hardly any big money on the other side. Organizer Katina Volinger is with Homes Not Handcuffs, a PAC opposed the camping ban. We're always the small guy. It has raised about $23,000, mostly from small donations. The pack has spent more than $400, all for the online vendor that accepts the payments. Volinger says volunteers are going door to door, making their case to voters. We have conversations from folks at the door saying, when is the next time I want to go out and inform my neighbor? But Save Austin Now says this election is not about big money versus a grassroots effort. Will money decide this vote? I don't think it's a simply a question of money. Um, I do think it's, it's a question of the campaign that you run and how effective your campaign is. Kevin Clark, KXAN Investigates.